Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're already back with a brand new video. That's right, we have barely digested and got over what was a stress-filled afternoon at the Tony Macaroni. Well, it's time just two days removed to go through all the emotions, the highs, the lows, the dramas. Hopefully there isn't too many lows. Right, enough. But a mixture of everything that Rangers can give you. But at this time, it's not in the league. Na 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 We set our sights. On the old Champions League. Now I'm sorry, but if that phrase right there in that opening Disney just get you gone here in the Champions League and Rangers side by side, I don't know what else to give you, ladies and gentlemen, because it's that time again, that opportunity that we squandered last year is now upon us to set it right and fingers crossed we are. But again, we kind of jump right into that right yet. There is a two-legged tie, but before we even kick our ball, you know what we like to do here on the channel. We like to look at our dance partner, we like to see what they're all about. So without any further ado, let's just dive right into this bad boy. And as always, we'll start off with the oppositional preview and have a look at Union saint Gelanese. I think that's how you pronounce it. It probably is, not I watched about 18 different videos and six different websites. It's close, but I think for everyone, so everybody can relax, so I'm not butcherizing that throughout the rest of the video, I'm just going to call them Union SG. You're welcome. Internet. I'm sorry, but moving on, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not just a very, very impressive name of a team that we're actually facing. No, 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 no. This Belgium side actually has a lot going for it. And I think the longer you watch today's video, you the more you actually hear that. Because let's be honest, when the draw was done, when we saw who it was, we avoided Monaco, we avoided PSV. We heard a team that, without being disrespectful, that we hadn't heard too much about. And I think we all thought, right, that sounds like a very, very good draw. Maybe we've got a good team team here to actually go ahead and face but ladies and gentlemen I wish I could say that I wish we were playing a duffer side I wish we were playing an easier draw but we are not people and I uh, we're going to talk all about that because this is a side that last season got promoted up to the top division in Belgium football where everyone was writing them off after the trials and tribulations to get back to the top of the division they were in there and they were expected to be bottom to near fight and relegation, but that never happened. Nana, they went all the way to the tip of the top, and after 34 games in the Belgium League, they were sitting six points clear at the top with 16 goals advantage on Club Bruges. It was mental, ladies and gentlemen. You talk about Leicester City and everything that, and again, it's hard to put it into that context given how much money there is in the Premier League, but it's a similar story in terms of a team that no one fancied to be right up there battling and leading the league title with 34 games played. But, and there is a but, ladies and gentlemen, because, of course, if they had went on to win the league, they'd be right into the Champions League right now, but they are not people because what happens in Belgium football, do you know how we've got this split and again people can have their split opinion on that actual aspect but actually in Belgium what happens is the top four teams battle out in what they call the champions round where the top four teams play each other twice and at the end of that the champion reigns supreme and ladies and gentlemen despite being six points clear, 16 goals advantage and having a truly fairy tale story in their hands after 34 games it went to the champions round and unfortunately for Union St. G it didn't happen at all people because they went on to lose three of their six matches in the champions round in Club Bruges took over them and they went on to win the title. Now, the mayor, I've actually paid attention to this team and obviously spent the last couple of weeks finding everything I could do about them for you in this video. The more it kind of gets harsher and almost feels bad because, again, the story was there. A team just promoted for the second division up who's had trials and tribulations through the lower leagues coming up, blah, 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 to go on to do that and then fall away at the last hurdle. It was a real shame, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, people, and we now face them in the qualifier and aye that's how we get there they bottled the league title with the last six games to go in the old champions round and that already right there i think paints more of a fairer ref reflection sorry on what team we're actually facing because again they are near duffer side that's maybe finished fourth or fifth in the belgium league and we're playing them no this was a team that was playing at the top best for scoring best for uh, not conceding any goals the way they were going about it mace interceptions mace assists they were dominating every start until the last six games and it was just a step too far 
for the young and impressive cheap side, by the way, because they've not even spent a single million on a player ever in their history. And that's the team that we're facing. They're underdogs, they're fighters, they're gritty, they get stuck in. And again, they punch well above their weight. So that's the story of how they got to the dance floor, to Rangers, but how are they warming up? How are they dancing on their way? Are they doing the dad dance up there or are they playing pretty well? Well, so far this season coming in, they've actually played one more competitive match than Rangers in the league. They've played two overall and you know what's funny, right? The way they, they exploded on it the scene last season, beating Ander like 3-1 and everyone was gone metal, it's kind of been a little bit flat. It's got a lot of people talking because they started the league campaign with not a fantastic win over a title rival or anything like that. It was a disappointing 1-1 draw with STTV and a, and a game sorry, that they required a second half goal to get back into the bad boy and coming into their most recent game of football in the Friday before we ended up playing them. And they did get back to winning ways. They did get a clean sheet. That's what they built their success on last year. But again, it wasn't a great overall performance as they only managed to win 1-0 in the game, again relying on a second half goal to get them over the edge. So I, if I was sitting here being lazy and trying to do the bare minimum for these videos, I'd sit back and say they've got four points from the opening six. It's a good start to the season. They're playing well. But in terms of how they were playing last season, now the expectations in that there, it's not quite reflected and clicked just yet as the team is they're sort of finding their way on who they are now because of the devastating way the season ended. Because not only did that go ahead and happen, right? You look at the transfer business, has this team sort of changed from that? Yes, it has. There has been a couple of first team players leaving the squad at the end of last season, including, in my opinion, one of the best midfielders in Casper Nielsen, who went ahead and joined title pension rivals Club Brews for around five, six million pounds. And he was a big player for them in the middle of the park. And I, I just think they're missing someone like that in the middle, which is obviously a blow for them, but very nice for us. Moving on from talking around the team, however, let's get in there and talk about on the park. How do they go about their business? How do they line up, etc., etc.? Well, they line up in a more traditional 3-5-2 formation that's built on keeping the ball, spreading the ball out wide, and getting the ball into the mixer as they're a shot heavy side averaging 15 shots per game this year. Again, they didn't get too many of them actually on target, but they've got a lot of players that's just willing to have a pop. I wouldn't say they've got a main man in terms of everyone funnels through him and he gets them going. He's the main goal scorer. I think one of the reasons they were so 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 successful, sorry, so 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 successful last season is the fact that goals were able to be spread all over the place. They can be unpredictable. If this guy's not having a good game, this guy's having a game. It's gone to him. He's having a pop. Then he's having a pop, and that filters in and fits the formation because again they get forward. They pile people forward. The three centre halves with Big Vander in the middle, sort of marshals things. They've now got Sykes, who actually just joined them this season, by the way, from Accrington Stanley at right centre back. But the man's already scored a goal this season and playing pretty well for them as far as I can see. So the back three can sometimes be left vulnerable because everyone just gets forward. They spread out and again they play free flowing attacking football because they just want to outscore the opposition. But again, they're a hard working outfit as we've already mentioned. They conceded very little goals last year, especially through the opening 25 games. Oh my God, they were playing unbelievable because it was almost, you know how Leeds had that thing under uh, Marco Bielsa where everyone had a man in a game and that was your man and you had to run and you run and you and eventually was exploited in the Premier League. But it's very similar to like that as well. And we'll see that tomorrow from the first game. There'll be someone on that guy, and that'll be his guy for the entire freaking game. Sometimes it works, sometimes it can be exploited. It depends on the movement of the opposition. Hopefully we're keeping switching and changing a Kent, a Lawrence, a Rabi, everything like that, keeping them off so they can get comfortable. And maybe a Tillman could be a key man. But aye, if we're flat, if we're lackadaisical, if we're playing everyone safe, that'll play right into their hands and they'll have a guy on us every single time. We get the football, but regarding going forward, by the way, it is worth noting they're not really the most physically demanding side, especially the two centre forwards that they've lined up with over the last couple of games, at least both of them standing at 5-9. Now, again, that could change 
coming in this game because again they do alter and change so much but I can only tell you what they've done so far and that's been two five foot nine centre forwards who are getting in behind sprinting spreading the centre backs and using their pace rather than their physicality so that could be an interesting test for this Rangers backline especially the way we've been looking at and especially the way that we play Connor Goulton and Suter or Connor Goulton and Sands or Connor Goulton and Davies will have to be on the ball because they just didn't stop moving. So I fast build up play, getting the ball out wide and getting balls in behind, having the centre backs running backwards will be something you should see a lot of from their perspective tomorrow and hopefully we're able to counter that and nullify that and honestly that's all really good to say about tomorrow's opposition. Again I would love to be sitting here saying that they're a poor side and a bad side and we, we dodged a bullet with this team or this team but we're playing a very very good side that plays Good football, hard working, nay egos. It's a tricky, tricky game this tomorrow and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how Giovanni tries to counter them because, again, they are such an, a unique team to play, especially this early on in the season when you've not got too many games under your freaking belt. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the oppositional preview done and dusted. Now we get to the Rangers side because, of course, there is a lot to talk about right here from the centre-backs to going forward. Who's back for injury? There's a big boost on that front. But before we get to the latest team news, let's talk about the centre-back situation then, shall we? Because, again, that's going to be the main battle for me. I know they like going out wide and they, they play wide and I normally I'll say it, and especially in Europe, that will be where the game's won and lost, but I do think our centre-backs need to be on the ball here just because of how quick these boys run about and try and stretch the defence, etc, etc. Which leads me, obviously, to a talking point that I'm not going to go into today's video because genuinely I didn't feel comfortable doing it. A YouTuber should never be here, sitting here speaking on behalf of a player or their family because of a devastating loss in that family. That's not what I'm about at all, people. I try and keep it light-hearted. I try and have a bit of fun here on the channel when we go through the roller coaster. Plus, the way it wasn't spoken about in the press conferences of that, everything's sticking to business. In football, we're going to do that in today's video and we're going to have to talk about John Souter and Connor Goulton said a couple of things during the press conference that I agree with and disagree with. I disagree with the fact that, pe that, that he came out and said that people can't be critical of him in that game versus Livingston. For me, that's nonsense. He was really poor in that game and again, we reflect on the football that's on there and it was one game, but that's the game what we're talking about. We're not talking about his Rangers career. We're talking about Livingston versus Rangers and versus Livingston in that Rangers game. He was poor and I think that's fair to say from a footballing point of view. But where I do agree with him is the fact that he doesn't agree with people writing him off and that already, which is absolutely spot on. Yes, Suter was bad versus Livingston, but that's no it. I mean, I've watched so many Rangers players have horrific, and I mean horrific, opening games, hearing supporters bus, hearing my father going mental and everything like that. We've seen it all, we've been it all, but again, these players can go on to have a fantastic career. And I do think Big Soapy will have a good Rangers career. It's not been a good start, but again, that's the way football goes sometimes. So that's my opinion on it and that as well. He's been poor to start, but he's not going to be a flop or anything like that. I mean, John Lundstrom, who we all love now, and to be fair, I had back for the start, may I add, but... His first European game, he got sent off. You should have seen the comment section and seen Twitter knew the same people that was willing to drive him back to Sheffield. Has tattoos of the laddies and profile pictures. Like, you know what I mean? Let's be a little bit patient with Suter. But where a day, go and say that. It also leads me to this game right here. Because honestly, from a footballing point of view, the way Suter was playing versus Livingston and the way this team plays... That is flashing red warning signs, in my freaking opinion, because they'll be licking their lips at that type of prospect. We saw Livingston targeting on them the longer the game went on, and I think that'll be a thing that goes. So it's going to be a massive, massive decision from Giovanni if it goes with Suter beside Golton in this game tomorrow. But again, that's why you get paid the big bucks. It's to make this type of decision. So I just want to know where your heads are. Now it's a couple of days removed from Livingston. Do you think Sands? Do you think Suter? Or do you think Davis should be able to just uh, drop right in there and go ahead and play? Where 
is your head's at. Again, for me, I see a successful time for Suter at Rangers, but maybe it's in the back three. Now, if you've been watching my videos over the summer, I've been talking a lot about the back three with John Suter, Ben Davies, especially now that he's came in, and Conor Golton is the back three with Suter in the middle, having people round him, protecting him that way so he doesn't need to turn and he can use what he brings to the table, that ball playing ability, and again, his physicality to his strength. That, for me, would work. But again, I didn't see it happening just yet in the season. I know Giovanni likes the free, uh, the back free, sorry, in Europe. But again, it would be a ballsy decision if he changed to it right away. But if you're talking about the regular formation that we line up in, two at the back, for me, I am still leaning more to Sands because of his movement and pace. Or if Big Ben can go... I'd go with the big laddie himself. So aye, that was my long-winded way of discussing everything regarding the centre-back spot, which is again the hot topic right now, which is why we need to go ahead and discuss it. Hopefully you've let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below, because I'd just love to know where your heads are at regarding the centre-back spot. Again, having looked at a lot of this team and how they move and how quick they are. Again, they're not a big physical team up front. I think we will need some pace in that back line and again, some decision from Gio, but moving away from that, while she might, might be letting me know your opinions on the centre-back spot, let's get to some team news then, shall we? Because I saw a couple clickbait that started to spiral and I got a couple tweets, again, no many, but a couple tweets and a couple comments about Morelos being included in the European squad. Does that mean that he's able to go tomorrow? Unfortunately, for everyone watching today's video, that is not the case. I don't know why someone clickbaited that like that. Probably just to get some clicks on them and everything like that. No, Morelos is still on his way back. Again, it won't be too long before he's back amongst it, but he's been included in the European squad because if we qualify into that, maybe by the next round, blah, 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 etc, etc. But again, we've got Cholak, people. Jump on the Cholak Express. There's plenty of room. There's like six years on this train, right? There's a 50,000 seats available. Get on the Cholak Express. He's a good player. He had one chance versus Livingston. He scored. He was robbed by a horrific linesman. He's a good player, people. We're in safe hands until Alfredo goes ahead and returns. But he's not the only one officially ruled out the game. Of course, you've got Haji. You've got Holanda. And Roof remains in this strange situation where they didn't tell us too much. But they say he's no in contention or it might be or blah, blah, blah. So we don't know what's going on with Kamaru for when he'll be back officially. But from the sounds of it, he's close to coming back. And it's a shame that he's not because what a record he has for scoring for us versus Belgian sides. I mean, he even scored for his own half versus them. But aye, it doesn't look like Kamaru Roof is eligible. However, it is not all doom and gloom right now. We do have some fantastic team news, people, regarding injuries, and that's the fact that we Rab himself, Rabbi Matondo, is back, baby, as Adam Cole would go ahead and say. That's right, the quickster, the speedster, who I think could really punish this side tomorrow, because, again, they are mostly 1v1 on everything, and you just look at what that guy was able to do versus Spurs and everything, and even West Ham. He's got something about him, and if he can just beat that one man, there's going to be gaps for him absolutely everywhere now. Again, it would be a ballsy decision to start him from Gio, but whether he starts or off the bench, I think we Rab will have his say on the overall tie versus Union again because of how they line up. Beat one man, you've got acres to run, and by God... Can that guy run? And that's honestly sort of it. We've obviously got the Alex Lowry situation, who's now back with the B team to get more training and get more minutes available playing football because he had an injury during the summer. He's not been demoted or anything. Don't pay attention to that clickbait nonsense. People just want to funnel you into. He's not been punished or anything like that. He had a serious injury. He's getting used in that situation to build him back up and he'll be back amongst the first team, hopefully, very, very soon. And again, Ben Davis remains the same. Getting more minutes, getting built up. And hopefully we see him not too long as well. But honestly, that's kind of all I really got to say here, people. We've talked about the opposition. We've looked at the main talking point, which is obviously the centre-back situation. And also, for me, the key area in this game because of who we're playing. We've discussed the latest Rangers team news. Now, all that's left for us today is try to predict the unpredictable and... Aye, it is going to be a tough game, in my opinion, so let me know your thoughts and opinions now we've painted more of the picture. And while she's do that, I don't know, like, maybe I'm just being naive and dumb because I love my team and everything like that, because I know how difficult it's going to be, I know how good this side's been, but I just feel like we're going to get a good result, and I think even a draw would be a good result in the first leg, but I'm going to back us to win with the same scoreline we won versus Livingston. Rangers 2, 
Union SG won that is what I'm going to go with, ladies and gentlemen. And again, Cholak and possibly Rabi being the difference makers in the actual game. And aye, this is all done and dusted, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait for the game tomorrow. I look forward to watching every single second it, being terrified and feeling sick. But that's what we do. Again, I'll be seeing you very late tomorrow if you're going to stay up to watch it. Danny, if you've got work on that, just, just, just go to sleep. You can watch the video the next again day. Look after yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. But aye, I'll be uploading very, very late after the Champions League game tomorrow. But until then, take care of yourselves, everyone. All the best and bye-bye.